Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Physics Sticks. So let's start with kinematics DPP4. Okay, so see here, a body is projected upward with a velocity of 40 meter per second. So it will travel up in the last second of its journey. We want what is called as the uh, distance traveled, right? Is that supposed to be? Okay, last second of its journey. So if you just calculate, if you just calculate, what is the time required, right? Time of ascent, we can say it is 40 divided by 9.8 time of ascent u by z, right? So this is the 40 divided by 9.8, whatever that second is, right? So over here, as dash we want, so here you can consider initial velocity as 0 meter per second if you consider from the top. So it is s is equal to ut plus half a t squared. So 1 by 2, a, a over here is 9.8 into t squared is 1 squared. So it is 4.9 meter. Right, so no need to consider this. You can do from the uh, bottommost point also, but it will take time. So that's why just by using the one step, you can calculate if you consider from the top because time required to go up and time required to come down will be the same. So next, uh, the position of a particle moving along the x-axis is given. The acceleration of particle at an instant with its velocity becomes zero. So firstly, position is given x is equal to minus 2 t cube plus 3t squared plus 5. Now differentiate this position with respect to time. So d by dt, you will get velocity. So dx by dt is equal to velocity and that is equal to d by dt of minus 2t cube plus 3t squared plus 5, which is equal to minus 6t squared plus 60 plus 0 is equal to 0. So if you just take the time common, so it will become minus 60 plus 6 is equal to 0. So t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 1 seconds. So we want acceleration of a particle at an instant, its velocity becomes 0. At time t is equal to 0 and at time t is equal to 1 second. So if you just differentiate this velocity with respect to time, you will get acceleration. So dv by dt which is equal to acceleration and that is equal to minus 12t plus 6 which is equal to 0. So if you just uh, put, if you just put t is equal to 1 over here, you will get minus 6 meter per second squared and and t is equal to 0, you will get acceleration as 6 meter per second squared. So over here, as it is given only the minus 6 meter per second squared, so answer for this question is minus 6 meter per second squared. So what you have to do? You have to firstly differentiate position, you will get velocity, then differentiate velocity, you will get what is called as the acceleration. And if you want the acceleration, differentiate velocity, that's it. So I hope this is clear. Next question, a car traveling at a, at a speed of 30 km per hour is brought to rest in distance of 8 meter by applying brakes. If the same car is moving at a speed of 60 km per hour, 60 km per hour, then it can be brought to rest with the same brakes in. Okay, so it is given. Firstly, uh, the final velocity is 0 squared is equal to initial velocity is 30 squared. Now, uh, you have to multiply that with uh, 5 by 18. Now, why? Because 30 km per hour given. So I'll just convert this into the meter per second. So 60, 30 into 5 divided by 18, 6 threes are, 6 fives are, so it is 25 by 3. This is the initial velocity. Final velocity is 0 given. So find out the deceleration over here. So A is equal to final velocity 0 squared minus initial velocity 25 by 3 over squared divided by 2 into S, that is 16. So which is equal to minus 6. 25 divided by 9 into 16. So this is the meter per second squared. This is the deceleration which we have. Now we want if the same car is moving at a speed of 60 km per hour, then it can be brought to rest with same brakes in. Okay. Now, now the initial velocity is given and that is equal to 60 km per hour. So 60 into 5 by 18, which is equal to 6 tens are so 50 by 3 meter per second squared. So final velocity is 0 squared minus initial velocity is 50 by 3 whole squared divided by 2 into s is equal to a. a over here just now we have calculated and that is minus 
25 square divided by 9 into 16. So if you just solve this, you will get S is equal to this minus this minus plus. So it will become 50 into 50 divided by 9 into 9 into 2 into this is 9 into 16 divided by 25 into 25. So 25 twos are 25 twos are this 2, this 2 get cancelled, this 9, this 9 get cancelled. We have then 16 twos are 32 divided by 9. 32 divided by 9. So if you just solve this, you will get might be somewhere I did mistake. Yeah, here it is 9 is not present. So here we have S as 32 meter. S as 32 meter. So I hope this is clear. That is option 2 is the correct option. Next question. A ball projected from ground vertically upward is at same height at time T1 and T2. The speed of projection of a ball is. Okay. So a ball is thrown upward with velocity u and it will be at same height at time t1 and when it is coming back at time t2. So we know that t1 plus t2 we have is time of flight and that is 2u divided by g. So what is u then? g divided by 2 into t1 plus t2. It's very simple. Right now. So time required for a ball to go up is t1 and then to the come to the same point it is t2, t1 plus t2 that is the total time of flight we have. Next the displacement time graph is given. So do remember one thing and that is slope of displacement time graph. Gives velocity. Slope of displacement time graph gives velocity. So over here, over here, as you can see, slope of this A line is 30 degree, that is tan 30 degree, and slope of this B line is total angle is 60 degree. So therefore, tan theta for A is equal to tan theta for A is equal to velocity of A and tan theta for b is equal to velocity of b so therefore therefore velocity at a is equal to tan of tan of 30 degree for a which is tan 30 we know that it is 1 by root 3 and velocity of b is tan 60 degree for b which is root 3 so va divided by vb is equal to 1 by root 3 divided by root 3 which is 1 divided by 3 1 divided by 3 and as you can see va by vb is 1 is to 3 so i hope this is clear now next a particle move with velocity v1 for time t1 so the particle moves with velocity v1 for time t1 and with velocity v2 for time T2, we want the magnitude of its average acceleration. So, what is the average acceleration? Average acceleration is so total change in velocity by total time. So what is the total change in velocity over here? V2 minus V1 is the total change in velocity. What is the total time T1 plus T2? So over here, V2 minus V1 by T1 plus T2, that is option 2 is the correct option over here. Next question. The water drops falls at a regular interval from a tap 5 meter above the ground. The third drop is leaving the tap at an instant. The first drop touches the ground. How far above the ground is the second drop at that instant? Okay, so this is the tap given. Right, so firstly, I'll, I'll prove and this is, uh, this equation can be solved by using Galileo's law. And what is that called Galileo's law? I'll explain over here. So if anything is falling with a, with a regular interval, that means time is same. So I'll consider the end drops over here. 
if this is the nth drop right so over here if you consider x over here if you consider y over here if you consider z over here if you consider p right so over here if this is the x right if this is the x what is galileo's law galileo's law states that for for uniformly accelerated uniformly accelerated motion for uniformly accelerated motion the distance is traveled distance is traveled will be in the ratio of 1 is to 3 is to 5 is to 7 is to and so on for equal interval of time for equal interval of time so therefore so therefore you can write this x as this x as half g t squared this x plus y as half g 2 t squared y because time interval is same given right t t t and t so for x plus y plus z as half g 3 t squared so if you if i want what is x in terms of what is y in terms of x so it is x is half g t squared x plus y is half g 2 t squared now why i consider x plus y and why not y only because initial velocity initial velocity for a drop we know 0 meter per second it is just released right so it is half g 2 t squared so what likewise x plus y plus z is half g 3 t squared now if i want if i want y in terms of x what is x half g t squared so put it over here so x plus y is equal to this is 4 in bracket 1 by 2 gt squared now half gt squared is nothing but what x so this is 4x so y we have is 3x likewise likewise if i want z so x plus 3x plus z is equal to this is 9 1 by 2 gt squared but is but what is 1 by 2 gt squared 9 into x so you you have z is equal to 5x likewise if you take x plus y plus z plus p is equal to half g what is here 4 t squared so over here x plus y plus z just now we have calculated and that is 9x plus p is equal to this is 16x so what is p then 7x likewise if you go on calculating the distances distances you will get the distances will be in the form of x is to 3x is to 5x is to 7x is to and so on so you will get 1 is to 3 is to 5 is to 7 is to and so on so now how to calculate this sir? so see here the water drops falls at regular intervals from a tap 5 meter above the ground so it is given 5 meter above the ground this is the tap okay so third drop just touches the ground when the uh, when the sorry first drop touches the ground when the third drop just releases so this is given 5 meter let us suppose this distance as x then this must be 3x so 4x must be equal to 5 so x must be equal to 5 by 4 meter so once we got this x value they want what is the distance between what is the distance between second drop from the ground so second drop is this one so it is 3x so you will get distance of second drop from the ground and that is equal to 3x which is equal to 15 divided by 4 so it is Four threes are point uh, three four sevens are four fives are meter three point seven five meter. So I hope this is clear. So it is very simple, right? Once you know the Galileo's law, 
it will be very simple to find out any type of answer right now i'll give one question for homework try to solve and answer your uh, right comment your answer in the comment box so over here this is the tab given and we have these are the drops which are coming from this tab at a regular interval and this is given 100 meter suppose this is given 100 meter and this is the first drop second drop third drop fourth drop and fifth drop fifth drop so you can consider this as 50 meter don't consider 100 50 meter find the distance of fourth drop from ground first question second question find the distance of fifth drop from ground okay so all these questions you need to solve and uh, comment your answer in the comment box sure so next question we have <clears throat> if a car at rest accelerates uniformly to a speed of 144 km per hour in 20 seconds it covers a distance of okay so distance we know that s is equal to ut plus half at squared and it is accelerating on a straight line without turning back so displacement must be equal to distance over here u is equal to 0 meter per second <clears throat> so s is equal to what is u 0 half a over here a over here we don't know into t squared is 400 now how to calculate a how to calculate a s is equal to 1 by 2 a is final velocity we have and that is 144 kilometer per hour so 144 into 5 divided by 18 minus initial velocity is 0 divided by time is 20 into 400 so this is 20 so s we have is equal to uh, 2 7 za, 2 2 za into 5 divided by 18 into 20 so 18 4 za we have and as you can see over here this is 5 4 za 20 into 20 that is 400 meters so i hope this is clear so we have 400 meter or else you can directly find out this by using what is called as the uh, v is equal to u plus at firstly find out the acceleration then put in v square minus u square is equal to 2s that is totally your choice okay you can do by any equation next question so this is the ninth question a particle is thrown vertically upward its velocity at half of the uh, height is 10 meter per second so this is the particle which is thrown upward with unknown velocity and it is given at half of its height its velocity is 10 meter per seconds this is given h divided by 2 so after this it will travel h by 2 the maximum height is equal to okay so the final velocity is 0 so final velocity is 0 squared is equal to initial velocity is 10 squared plus 2 into a we have is 10 that is what given over here minus 10 you have to consider into h divided by 2 so if you just solve this you will get 100 is equal to 2 to get cancelled 10 h so h we have is 10 meter so yes it is just the application of v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 a s upward direction velocity or acceleration or the displacement you have to consider positive downward direction you have to consider negative that's it Chalo. next 10th one the position x of a particle varies with time and that is given x is equal to at squared minus bt cube the acceleration will be zero at time t is equal to okay so over here x is equal to at squared minus bt cube 
so we want acceleration and just now i told x if you differentiate you will get velocity if you differentiate velocity you will get acceleration and that acceleration we want that is equal to 0 at what time so differentiate this dx by dt and that is equal to 2at minus 3bt squared now which formula you i used over here and that formula is d by dx of x to the power n is n into x to the power n minus 1 now if you differentiate this uh, with respect to time you will get this is the velocity so dv divided by dt and that is equal to 2a minus 3b into 2t which is equal to 2a minus 6bt which must be equal to 0 and 6bt is equal to 2a so what is time then a divided by 3b so this is the time at which the acceleration will become 0 a divided by 3b and it is given in option one now i'll give one question for you all try to solve this question S similar type uh, the position of the particle is given and x is equal to a t squared plus b t cube plus c find find velocity velocity at t is equal to 0 seconds first second acceleration at t is equal to 1 second third time at which velocity and acceleration becomes 0. Chalo, I hope this all questions are clear. So, thank you so much.